Leo, hello. For those of you who have been here before, welcome back. And for those of you who it's your first time, welcome. I'm Denise. This is Surrender to the Flow Tarot. And today I will be doing a general mid-monthly reading for the collective of Leo. Any placement you have that in, it will work. The way that I do mid-monthly readings are broken into deacons. Every astrological sign is divided into three parts called deacons, where your birth, when your birthday is de determines which deacon you fall into. So I will pull cards for deacon one, deacon two, and deacon three. I'll do a full reading for each one. Sometimes I pull one card at the end for everybody. Um, that's just determined during each reading. It's different. I will have timestamps below so that you can just click on your deacon and watch just yours. But before you do that, I'd like to let you know that every single reading, all of the deacons all tell one story. It's different aspects of the same story. You feel me? So it's probably worth watching them all, but that's on you. Do you, boo. Okay, so... Deacon one for Leo, if your birthday falls between July 23rd and August 1st, you're in Deacon one. For Deacon two is August 2nd to the 12th. And for Deacon three is August 13th to the 22nd. If you are using this reading for a sign, a placement other than your sun sign, use the same Deacon that your sun sign is in. So for me, I'm in, I'm Libra, I'm in the second. So I read my other ones in the second for them, you feel me? Okay, so we're going to start with tarot and then clarify with oracle or tarot. It will depend. Um, we're starting with the line strider tarot. And I've been using the L key for clarification. But we'll just see. It, it, it's just whatever is called for during the reading. The question I'm asking the universe is what can you do right now to raise your energetic vibration? So for now to, to carry through for the rest of the month, okay? And we're gonna start, I'm gonna pull all three, one, two, three. I'll talk a little bit about each one and then I'll go into each separate one. Deacon one, July 23rd to August 1st. Let me take a little bit of water. Okay. There's something going on in my eye. Hold on. Do you ever get the feeling sometimes that there's like, it's like, feels like a string is like going from my upper eyelashes to my lower ones. Has that ever happened? But there's nothing there, but it just feels weird. Like they're, my eyelashes are caught on something. <laughs> if you have had that too, I would love to know what the hell it is in the comments. Okay. I can't stand this fucking angle today in this light. It's so bright. It's because it's still dark outside. I can't stand this light. Okay. <clears throat> Taken one, July 23rd to August 1st. Here we go. The Nine of Cups, that has to do with your personal like wish fulfillment. Like, knowing what you want, getting what you want, working for it and getting it. Okay. Deacon One is the Eight of Swords. That is so the opposite of the Nine of Cups. That's anxiety. Okay, <laughs> Deacon 2, August 2nd to the 12th. Justice sideways going into the reverse. Deacon three, I'm gonna switch them up a little, August 13th to the 22nd. Okay, Deacon, wait, one more, wait. Oh, oh gosh. What's going on here?
August 13th to the 22nd. Ten of Cups, the Nine of Cups, starting the Ten of Cups, ending. The Four of Pentacles, okay. That's settling, holding back, settling out of fear. Ooh. The Ace of Swords is what came out, the Five of Wands. All right. Ace of Swords. Interesting, interesting, interesting. On the split for all three deacons is the Hierophant. So we're talking about soul contracts or contracts of any kind or institutionalized beliefs or institutionalized systems. And on the bottom is the Page of Cups. that's having an open heart. That's deciding to begin something and opening up your heart, right? It's like the pursual pursuit in whatever way that is. Maybe it's just the idea of like you're thinking about relationship, you know what I mean? And maybe it is there is someone or some yeah someone you want to be in relationship with and so you're you're starting the beginnings of that of like letting it be known you know what i mean underneath that is the judgment interesting underneath the hierophant is the knight of cups the Page of Cups, the Knight of Cups. The Knight of Cups is, is making an offer and having an open heart and being open and vulnerable and present and, you know, excited too is in there. Um, so this is about a, this is about relationship. It's about, it might be about the idea of relationship and not, exactly a specific relationship it might be about every relationship you've ever had you know what I mean significant but I think this is about the ideas of it like your belief you're looking at the way you view it and that there is <clears throat> a shift that is required and looks like you have taken it judgment has happened and there's a calling there's at some point recently or some point in the past, it became very clear to you a new way of, a new road. How do I explain this? It's you got a glimpse of your higher self. And it shifted for you, right? You got a glimpse of it and you, it would require changes. And some of those will be very, very difficult and some of them won't be as difficult. And you, the accepting the judgment is accepting that, is making, taking the steps, is committing to it, right? Is deciding to go for it. The way you maintain it is to commit to it. You feel me? Okay, so Deacon 1, the Eight of Swords. I'm going to briefly go over each one, and I, I recommend staying and watching up to this and then clicking on your Deacon if that's all you want to do after that. The Eight of Swords is self-inflicted. It's anxiety, and it's self-inflicted. You are... You are... So stressors happen, something stressful happens, and we have a window where that stressor can just become a stressor and, and we can, you know, try to dissipate it or temper it, or that stressor can become an anxiety. So this is saying that there have been enough times where the stressors, you were not able to halt it 
and now it's it's anxiety in your brain and you're also adding to it. Whatever you're doing is adding to it, like you're stuck in it. Not saying you're trying to do this on purpose and you love it. No, it's behavioral. You know what I mean? Your, your behaviors are just swinging back into that. Okay, Deacon 2 is justice sideways going into the reverse, which means karma is trying to happen. And this has to happen from external, from the universe, not you. So this could be you trying to make justice happen, and so it's halting it. Or something is happening to make justice not be served fully. So we'll have to, we definitely have to clarify for all these things, right? Because what we want to do, what this is, is to what you can do to raise your energetic vibration, right? So for Deacon 1, it would it has to do with anxiety and, and thinking specifically. Just ju for Deacon 2, it's justice being served. So we have to see what behaviors are happening um, so you know what to do, right? To let it go. And Deacon 3, which is the 13th to the 22nd of August, is the Ace of Swords, which is a beginning it's the beginning of, of a journey, right? It's the journey to your truth. Not only your truth, but to be able to have clearer vision in all truth. So it's, you could look at it in your case as a journey of how to heal anxiety. You know what I mean? How to like an alternative where you're standing in the knowing and not in the thinking, worrying, whatever. You're in the knowing. That's where you want to be. Overthinking, thinking, you don't really want to use those. Discernment, yes, but that's something you only use occasionally when you need. Where you want to be is in a state of knowing, right? So that's where you figure out what that is for you. Okay, so now we're going to break off and we're going to start with Deacon 1, which is the July 23rd to August 1st, the Eight of Swords. I think I'm going to start with the L key and we're going to see because we might not need more than that, but we might, but... These are surprising, not surprising, these are dope. Where's the book, where's the book? Oh, come on, for the love of Pete. Hold on, <laughs> where's the book? Oh, wait, I know where it is. God damn it, I brought it in my bedroom last night because I was gonna do something. Shit, hold on, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, thank you. Sorry, thanks. Thanks for coming to my TED Talk. How to be not prepared. Okay. Let me put these back in. And I had Iris and Renee. And the, so these have questions that you ask. And those were very helpful, but clearly I forgot to, I just fell asleep when I went into my bed, which is good, but, okay, sorry. <laughs> All right, now we're really going to start Deacon One. Eight of Swords. What can you tell Leo? about what the Eight of Swords has to do with, what they can do with the Eight of Swords in order to raise their energetic vibration from now for the remainder of the month. And always. She who stands, Valencia, resolute, impl implacable, implacable, determined. I don't know what that word is. That light, man. 
Can I turn it off yet? Wait, sorry. Hold on. No. Boo! Can I turn it down? Is that worse? Uh, who cares? Okay. On the split is She Who Frees, Carly. Liberation, unrestrained, and freedom. That makes sense to me because it's anxiety, right? And you got She Who Stands and She Who Frees. So it, it's, it's looking like it's about your idea of yourself first, right? Of the truth for yourself. And on the bottom is she who waits, Minara, patience, waiting, determination. All right, so we're gonna read the bottom and the, um, the one that came out, we're gonna start with the bottom. Minara sits in a bower of leaves and flowers. So long did she pause there, the very flora has made its home in her hair. Because she knew the value of waiting, the ethereal glowing butterfly finally came to her. She made room for her dream by letting go of all else. What you want, you too can have. However, Minara will not give you the winged gift. The gift she offers is the lessons of patience. So it's like temperance, the temperance card. Your choice is before you now. Can you commit to the time it may take to get what you want? The message of this card is you may face challenges in going after the thing you want above all others. If it were easy, the actual obtainment would be diminished. Honor the path set in front of you. Be ready to stretch yourself because chasing this elusive desire will not be a walk in the park. Here I can hear you all going, like, ugh. Right? More like a hike through extracting and arduous forest trails. This is not a test of physical ability, but about your level of determination. You can always say no, but keep in mind that you may not get this particular chance again. Stop and evaluate your commitment to your desire. What that's saying to me is right now, you, right, the judgment, right? And the justice is sideways, so there's a pause. And there's a window right now where if you do the hard thing that's hard for yourself, but is the thing that will take you to your highest vibrational good. If you do it now, you will get there, right? If you don't do it now, you're going to prolong it by a very long time. You understand what I'm saying? Just keep in mind, it's wherever you are. If you're not ready, like really not, if you're having anxiety about thinking about doing it, then you're not ready yet. Be kind to yourself. Just be honest with yourself. Right? But be kind to yourself at the same time. So here are the questions. What are the patterns I can see? When has quiet observation benefited me before? How can I gain a new perspective now? Okay, let's read the one that came out for you, which is Valencia. I might pull tarot for you still. I don't know yet. She who stands embodies the spirit of resistance resoluteness. Her hair is tied back, revealing the determination in her face. Her bloodied sword rests in her hands. She's not holding it to defend herself. Instead, she clutches it to support herself. After a hard won fight, part of her would like to run, but the stronger part insists she hold her ground. Interesting, right? The waiting, the wanting to run, but staying. The fierce tusked skull on her right shoulder reminds her it is wiser to fortify her position. For now, Valencia holds her place. Those who would call her implacable would not be wrong. I don't know what that means. The message of this card is to stand your ground. The thing you've been working so hard to obtain will be in your possession soon. Do not give in to the urge to give up. And it's tied into relationship from what the underlying is here. Let this card serve as a reminder of your own resolution. Acknowledge where you've been, look at where you are now. Tie your hair back, roll up your sleeves. Now you must prove you have earned the spot. You will not be put aside easily. This moment will determine your own strength of will. Do not waver. Look them in the eye, hold their gaze, show them your implacable stance. Here are your questions. 
How do I underestimate myself? How can I best fortify my current position? In what ways am I resolute? Interesting. I'm going to pull tarot. I'm trying to decide if it's going to be a major arcana. I think it's not. We're going to do is this creatures? Nope. Oh, you're not on to me. Lightseers. Okay. What else can you tell Leo about the Eight of Swords and standing their ground and having faith? Um, what can they do to lift this Eight of Swords? What are the obstacles? What are the obstacles? Seven of Swords. So the Seven of Swords, the Three of Swords, and the Tower. This is deceit and betrayal and heartbreak devastating and everything falling apart that needs to fall because it needs to fall apart. I'm going to pull a couple more. The Four of Pentacles that came up before I thought to um, holding on and settling out of fear, like staying where you are. Oh, could it be self? Well, the two of wands. Okay, yeah. All right. So whatever happened to you in your past that has to do with love, with a with a, with a very close relationship to you at some point in your life that let you down and that you stayed down from it, that is falling. All of those remnants of it still are falling falling away. It's time for it to fall away, right? It's almost like you're trying to glue them together, <laughs> the pieces, instead of letting them go. Does that make sense? And there's what you need to do is you're at a decision point, the two of wands. This is what's in front of it though, blocking it is the seven of swords. See this thievery. Sometimes that can be to protect yourself, but most times it's not. It's, it's something else. Two of Wands is being at a crossroads, being at a transition point where it's time to make a decision. Are you going to stay with what you've always known and what has that gotten you? Like, you, eh, you're good enough, like it's good enough, but you're settling. It's like you're at the Four of Pentacles when you have the Ten. The Ten is what you deserve and where what you're meant to be, but you're staying at the Four. Do you know what I mean? It's like you're looking at whatever's happening like, yeah, this is bad, but like, whatever, I, it's not as bad as that, or it's been worse, or, well, like, this is all I'm ever going to get. This is what I deserve. Do you know what I'm saying? It's you being a thief for yourself. I'm going to pull one more card on this Seven of Swords, just specifically on that one, just to see. But what I, that's what I think, is that you're either just mistrusting, you have a general mistrust because you feel like you're going to be bamboozled or you're you're robbing yourself of a full rich life. You know what I mean? It could be either of those things for different of you. But let's I'm going to pull Can you make it a little more clear about what the 7 of swords is for Leo? Make this a little more clear. Oh, okay, thank you. The 5 of wands. It's feeling like it's you versus you, right? It's feeling like you're in competition. <sighs> like you have to fight for something. You have to fight and you're fighting yourself and it's this and your and your worth, your worth and your your own abilities are you're questioning them throughout. Does that make sense? 
Make sense, Deacon One? Okay, so for you to raise your energetic vibration is for you to take everything that you've done all this work so far on yourself and all of the the lessons that you have learned and the epiphanies you've gained and as far as you've come, take all of that, put it in your energetic reserve, start building it up, fortifying it, right? and stay in it, preserve it by staying, keeping this flowing and not staying in your comfort zone. It's time to push yourself out of it. It's time to push yourself out of it. So I think what could help for you when anxiety comes up is you need to combat that immediately with the sentence that is true. Do you understand? So if it's like, Am I crazy? Can I do this? Whatever your wish would be like, I am capable. I am worthy. I don't know. Do you know what I mean? It's whatever will work for you. Something like that. Because what you need to do to raise your energetic vibration is to not fall into the, in, the anxiety and to not stay stagnant. You feel me? Not let the anxiety be, be dictating what you're doing. Make sense? Okay. So that's Deacon 1. Now we will move on to Deacon 2, which is August 2nd to the 12th. And let's see this Justice card, why it's sideways going into the reverse. Deciding what we're going to pull. We're going to pull Tarot for a second. What do we do about this for a second? Okay, yeah, we'll pull tarot first. Why is the justice card going into the reverse? What can you tell Leo about what they need to do to raise their energetic vibration that has to do with this justice card? The emperor, which is funny because it was in the underneath before. So interesting. So that's Aries. It doesn't have to be. Um, at all, but it is the Aries card, if, if that's relevant. It's tied into someone who, hold on, the Knight of Pentacles, which is Virgo. Again, Justice is Libra also, FYI. It doesn't have to be any of these things. I'm just saying them if they are relevant. I'm going to pull one more. The Knight of Pentacles is sideways going into the upright. And the Eight of Swords again, which is from Deacon One. Okay. So there's anxiety about movement. Ooh. Okay. Wah! The Knight of Swords again. Oh, no, not the Knight of Swords again funny because it's like this dude you know what I mean and the six of wands wow okay this is gonna be five of pentacles on the split the knight of cups underneath Underneath the Five of Pentacles is the Ace of Swords, which is what Deacon Three is. See, they always flow. It's so interesting. Underneath the Knight of Cups is the Ace of Wands. So two new beginnings in inspired creativity um, and the determination to, 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 and the, to see it through, right? The determination, the, the, all of the fire and all of that to see it through. and then having an open heart. The Knight of Cups came up in the under, in, underneath in the split for Deacon One, and it's coming up in the split for Deacon Two. So this again is about having an open heart, uh, either accepting an offer or making an offer, being ready to be vulnerable, putting aside your feelings of challenging, your feelings of not being worthy enough, not fitting in, 
letting yourself fully be enveloped in a path of the light, right? Of, of the light and truth. Okay. So you got the emperor, the knight of pentacles sideways going into the upright, the knight of swords, and the six of wands. Now the knight of swords is the fastest moving knight in the deck, and the knight of pentacles is the slowest. And it's sideways, so it looks like you've been not moving, right? Okay. So it's both a timing thing and a, and a clarity thing and a truth thing. It's a timing and waiting and acting and then success. It's tied into the emperor. So it's whoever embodies the energy of very confident, strong, determined, stable though, like dependable, um, protective, charming, super attractive, has like the needs of, considers the needs of everyone, is, is tasked with seeing to the needs of everyone. Do you know what I mean? The emperor is a ruler, right? Is the one who takes action. Fights on behalf of, of people, fighting on behalf of yourself, but it has to start with confidence in yourself and, and the kind that will spur you into taking action. And I think that's what this is, is that justice is being halted because of non-movement. And part of, and the non-movement is due to your ideas of your self-worth, right? Because you got that on one side where you're like not sure still about it. You know who you are and you know you're dope, but you're not maybe, you're maybe not used to acting in those ways in preserving that and like presenting that part of you but at the same time you know it's very clear what to do and you have the you have the will to like go enact it and what's going to happen is success and it's not just going to be a victory like in your head it's going to be when you do this when you stand in your power you're going to be ex ex accepted acknowledged from anyone who sees you. Do you know what I'm saying? Let's pull an L key card to make that a little bit, maybe a little more clearer for you. Because where you go into is the Ace of Swords. So we'll see why that hasn't, what you have to do. I think it's just you fully, once you, once you make that switch and that switch happens in yourself where you're dedicated to the care and keeping of you. It propels you immediately into the path of, of truth, of clear vision, of clarity, third eye open. And it also has to do with your intuition, right? And you're, and you're like opening up to the insights that you're getting and being able to recognize them and then following through with them. You know what I mean? You're more psychic than I think you think or that you know, okay? Okay. <sighs> Primavera, she who begins. Launch, actualize, potential. Look at that, Leo Deacon 2. I hope everybody is watching them because see, they're all relevant. Okay. What did I do? 
The fucking smoke from the incense is like making my eyes water. Primavera celebrates the birth of all things in nature. She welcomes the rising sun as the herald of each new day. Delicate vines echo the fine chain she wears as her crown. Rather than become a part of the vines, she moves into the next moment. Everything she honors has a fresh start. The grapes will be transformed into wine. The butterflies will lay eggs for the next generation of caterpillars. All things in her purview launch something else. So Primavera rejoices in the potentials of all things beginning. Feel me? When you make that choice to stand in your power, everything else is going to open up, right? This card urges you to get started. Whatever has been on your mind or in your heart, this is the moment to begin. Commit to the journey ahead by facing the dawn. You are being called forth to set the match to the fuse. It's time to light things up and take the next bold step. Spread your wings and put a smile on your face as you greet the next good thing coming into your life. Like Primavera, open yourself to beginnings, right? The page of cups, the knight of cups over and over, the ace of swords, and you had the ace of cups too, right? I feel like you had another ace somewhere. Um, questions. What do I, what do I want to start? Am I doing everything I can to actualize my potential? What new beginnings are happening right now? All right, there you go, Deacon Two. So now we will go to Deacon Three and the Ace of Swords, Deacon Three, August 13th to the 22nd. And let's see what's up with this. We're gonna go right to the L key because we might not need tarot for this. Shiala, she who creates creativity, originality, spontaneity. Okay, so for those of you just tuning in and who did not watch the other deacons, um, the Ace of Swords is a beginning. It's the beginning of a path to enlightenment, to truth, to standing in your truth, to knowing your truth and being your truth, to be in a place of knowing, not in thinking, not in discernment, in knowing, right? The ace is the beginning of that. It's 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 something has happened that has opened your everything and you're moving in that direction, right? All right. Shiala. Shiala dresses to please herself. Everything she wears is a reflection of her true self. She decorates her face with makeup and grease paint to show off her inner fool. See the fool dancing upon the tambourine at her side? Shiala makes her own music too. There's a golden salamander on her shoulder that whispers crazy ideas. She chooses to follow the ones that appeal to her in the moment. She adores the ladybug in her hair and the dragonfly on her skirt. Spontaneity is her middle name. Although those who don't understand her call her a risk. Shiala embraces the energy of making things shine in her own unique ways. This card is a call to be original and a reminder that following others and doing what others think you should do is simply not for you, right? Ace of Swords. You know your truth. You know who you are. It's time for you. To, to stand in it, to keep maintaining that your sense of self, do the things that feed into it and, and to let yourself actively be that way and present it out into the world. You are being challenged to do something beyond the ordinary. Examine your world. Look for your own salamander and dragonfly guides to hint at where you need to be. The energy here is movement and change, but in original ways. Don't create another painting of a rose, paint the thorns instead. Stretch your mind. Creativity isn't only paintbrush and canvas. It's cooking, crafting, writing, singing, teaching. Where will your originality shine? So 
questions to ask are, what rut do I need to get out of? How can I shake things up in fun, creative ways? Who is the most spontaneous person I know? So there, there you go, Deacon 3. It is knowing your truth, being your truth, being your truth, being in your truth, and being your truth, living your truth, living out loud, right? Okay, Leo, I hope that this was helpful for all of you. Um, thank you for coming and sharing your energy with me, and thank you for coming and holding space for me so that I can attempt to translate and interpret the messages that are coming through for you. I will see you in about a week and a half, two weeks, because February is short, for your March monthly reading. Until then, bye-bye, Leo.